Hello, my name is Rahul. I'm currently doing my fellowship in pediatric critical care medicine. I'm also very passionate about helping students just like you kick ass on the USMLE. In today's video, we are going to be going through how to analyze and review an NBME assessment. I've broken this video down into two portions. The first portion, we're going to be talking about how to analyze your NBME score report, and then we will be talking about how to review your NBME in a systematic way. Now, NBMEs are also known as CBSSAs. They're essentially the basic science self-assessments. For Step 2CK, the forms on the NBME website are known as Clinical Mastery Series Assessments, CMS forms. This review process as well as the score report is going to be applicable to whether or not you are using them for step one or step two CK. For this video, I did do a deep dive into many of the NBME resources. There is a great uh, video on the self-assessment services page that the NBME has uh, put out. I would recommend you watching it. This video does also kind of summarize the key points. Most importantly, I did want to put my personal experience from years of helping students prepare for the USMLE. And just as a disclaimer, I'm really not affiliated with the NBME or USMLE. These are my personal opinions as well as synthesis of the data, uh, but I hope you're going to find great value in it. Real quick, what we will first go through as we tackle the how to analyze the NBME is to look at first what has changed with the new score report. Now, back in uh, 2020, the NBME did put out a new score report format that, as we will see, looks just like what you're going to get on USMLE test day. The old score report had these performance bands that were both with organ systems and domains, as well as across assessments. And the USMLE and NBME really intended you to look at these bands longitudinally. And if there were any overlap in the bands, that would indicate similar performance. And why I think that's really important is because now the new score report has designations of low, same, or high. And it's just based on the fact that now they are making these overlapping bands a little bit more binary and um, a little bit more easier to interpret. But if we looked at this assessment, you would see that in the categories of micro, path, pharmacology, and physiology for this particular student, they were performing pretty similar. And the one outlier is cardiovascular system, which had less overlap. That essentially indicates that this could be an area of improvement for this student. If we look at the new score report, like I mentioned, the new score report looks like what you're going to receive as your result on USMLE test day. There's also no longer an NBME scaled score, which you have to correlate to a table. Before, right here in the upper right-hand corner, there would be an NBME score, and you would correlate that NBME scaled score to a three-digit. And now they've gotten rid of that table, and the three-digit on the top is what your score is. So let's go through a sample score report. This is a score report of one of my students, and I've uh, blocked off the name just for privacy purposes. But if we look at this sample score report, we see that the assessment score is 211. And you are then going to look at this graph. Now, this graph has your scores here on the x-axis. The 194 is the minimum passing score. The 231 is the mean step one score. And we see that this student scored 211. And here's a gray box that is correlated to the expected step one score range. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can take this gray box and correlate it to this sentence right here. And if we read this together, we anticipate that your actual performance on step one will fall between 201 and 227 about two-thirds of the time. This is based on students who took CBSSA within one week before taking step one, i.e. they took this same assessment one week prior to step one, mimicking a population, in my opinion, of students who are at the peak of their 
content, the peak of their preparation. And this is the comparison group that they use to calculate this range. So a practical tip is take your score and also look at the range in the gray box, which is correlated to this sentence right here. This is also a really helpful feature of the score report, and that is just showing your previous scores. And as you can see, the student has just done absolutely awesome in terms of improving uh, on these uh, assessments. The next portion of this is going to be looking at the orange as well as these teal columns. Now, the orange columns represent your overall performance to the whole exam itself. So as you know, the exam has four blocks of 50 questions, and this orange bar shows how you did in comparison to all of the test items across the four blocks. If we take an example here, we see that diagnosis is going to be one of the question types. And across the whole assessment, this student performed the same with respect to these kind of questions. It is pretty nonspecific because if we scroll down a little bit more, we see that the same is pretty much in all of these organ systems as well as disciplines. What's helpful is, as you can see, this student, when you see the MSK portion, looking at the whole assessment, the student did much better in MSK compared to the other question types. And thus, this indicates an area of strength for this student. Let's go ahead and scroll up and talk a little bit about this teal box. Now, this teal box represents your performance compared to a comparison group. Now, who is the comparison group? Well, the comparison group is our student who took this assessment and step one for the first time. And essentially, it is going to map your progress to students who have just recently taken this same assessment pretty close to their step one and especially for the first time, because that gives you a control or a very standardized comparison group. As you can see, this student did perform lower on these types of questions compared to the students who recently took this self-assessment. And as we scroll down, the areas for improvement are nervous system, respiratory, as well as subdisciplines being pathology, physiology, pharmacology. Now, what I do want to point out and what might be helpful is for you to look at the discipline box as well as the organ system box and kind of correlate them together as you're reviewing your incorrects. For example, if you see that physiology is going to be a lower subdiscipline and you noted that this patient had or this student, excuse me, had respiratory and renal systems that were low, maybe the respiratory and renal physiology was the issue. And as we go through how to review the NBME, these types of strengths and weaknesses may come out a little bit more. But the summary of this is that you can use the organ system as well as the discipline interchangeably. All right. So a couple of take-home points that I did want to write. How do you interpret your NBME score? Well, if you look at your NBME score, your self-assessment score, in this case, it was a 211. This is the score which you would get if you took USMLE Step 1 today, i.e. the same day you took your practice exam, based on the amount of content you've studied thus far, the methodology in which you applied the information, as well as the current test-taking conditions. And this is key right here. You probably had some leveling anxiety that was factored in to your self-assessment. And so if you took the USMLE on the same day, this ends up being a factor in your overall score as well. So that's why I'm very focused on this test-taking psychology um, portion as I work with students and kind of expand my USMLE passions. Now, obviously, this score could be higher or lower, but this is a fact from the NBME website that two-thirds of the time, 
on average, students do three to four points higher on the USMLE. And this is based on that group of the students who took the same self-assessment one week prior to the step one. So the summary is, is that maybe you can take your self-assessment score and add three to four points, maybe higher and lower, so that you get an accurate description. And you also have that range in the gray box uh, that we talked about at the beginning of this video. So I do want to go into some specific components of the score report that were a little bit gray for me, and I want to take just a, some time to try to make things more clear, especially in this physician task box. So if we go up here, and here is your physician task box, you see that there are these general categories of questions, applying foundational science concepts, diagnosis, principles of management, evidence-based medicine. So I kind of want to make this a little bit more clear for you so you get more guidance, especially if you are going to be in the lower range or higher range uh, for these areas. So when you're thinking about the applying foundational concepts, in my opinion, this is going to be related to those pathophysiology, physiology, and pharmacology, particularly the mechanism questions. So that's what I said is that usually these foundational science concepts are putting together mechanism questions, and they may also test your vocabulary of certain diagnoses as well as uh, certain uh, physiologic principles. So always trying to look at pathologies and really go into the mechanism of the disease, and that may help you with these kind of questions. Now, as you know, there are the diagnosis and the principle of management questions. Obviously, the diagnosis questions are going to be what is the most likely diagnosis, but in particular, they are going to be related to your knowledge on how you can synthesize history from an exam question, the diagnostic studies like your labs as well as your radiographic, and patient outcomes. And this is directly from the NBME uh, PDF handout. And they kind of make these diagnosis questions related to this content spec. Now, the next best step in management questions for step one, they're getting away from those types of questions in the most recent announcement. And obviously, that's going to be the paramount or the leading type of question that you may see in step 2CK. But this is going to be related to health maintenance, pharmacotherapy, intervention, and management. And so the principles of diagnosis and principle of management, these are a little bit more in detail as what you can prepare for. So that's why I'm very, very keen on giving students test-taking strategies on labs or certain uh, radiographs, how to interpret them so that they can do well in this domain. And then PBLI is going to be quite an emphasis uh, for the coming assessments that the USMLA has also kind of talked about. And in particular, physician communication is going to be categorized in this. I also, based on my research, saw that appraisal of scientific evidence, so they'll give you like an experimental question and ask you to kind of interpret some of the biostats related to it or some of the interventions, that is all going to be encompassed in PBLI. Essentially, what we went through is how to go through these specific subdomains and get some learning out of it in your NBME assessment. The final portion of how to analyze an NBME, we are going to be talking about how to gauge your performance. Now, when we're talking about the three-digit score, the important thing is for you to recognize that there is consistency in between those assessments, i.e. all of those assessments are controlled based on difficulty. So that control that the NBME does allows you to look at each of those NBMEs and correlate in between your score, whether it's going higher or lower or the same. I also think that raw percentages, i.e. how much N number of percent correct you got between with each, each individual block and throughout the whole assessment is another great data point to track. One example that I do want to bring up correlated to the scaled score as well as the raw percentages is this example. So say you had two NBMEs. So you had NBME 20 and NBME 18. And you saw that in NBME 20, you got a 211 with 74% of the questions correct. But NBME 18, you got a 205 even though you got more percentage correct. 
And so, yes, this scenario would make me go WTF, but the explanation that the, that the NBME puts out is that self-assessment forms differ in difficulty, i.e. the assessment score adjusts for the difference in difficulty so that you can compare your different scores. So as you can see, maybe NBME 18 was a little bit tightly curved and you may need to get a higher percentage because it's a little bit of an easier exam compared to NBME 20. Now, these are arbitrary numbers, but it kind of illustrates the point that all of your USMLE self-assessments or these NBME self-assessments can be correlated with one another because the assessment itself is going to adjust for differences. Now, which forms are the most predictive of USMLE performance? The, U the NBME themselves put out all of them are based on predictive. And so my approach to this is not necessarily like going through, oh, NBME 24, then NBME 20, then do 18, then do this. What I like to say is start from the oldest assessment and move forward and also intersperse your UWorld self-assessment 1, UWorld self-assessment 2, and free 120 and make a schedule such that you are taking an assessment on the day that you will be taking the exam. So say my exam is on February 1st and February 1st, for example, is a Monday. Every Monday, I'm going to be taking an assessment. And so the take home here is that more data points in terms of assessment is better. The last portion of how to analyze an NBME is to look at how are the NBME scores calculated. Well, it's the same way that USMLE does scoring. So that's why I think the NBME self-assessments and the CBSSAs are a great way to monitor your progress for the USMLE. And essentially, each question is one point. And then the questions themselves, each individual question, undergoes a statistical transformation that adjusts for difficulty across the overall form. So how does that question, in terms of difficulty, correlate to the whole form. And that kind of goes back to this example that we went through. So that's the first portion of how to analyze your NBME. I hope that this was helpful and stay tuned for the next portion of this, which is going to be how I review an NBME.